Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over one worked example to show you how to do problems involving rotational kinetic energy. Specifically, we're going to look at the example for an object rolling down a slope. Now, if you haven't done so already, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. In our one and only question, it says that a ball is rolled down a slope from a vertical height of 0.25 meters. The ball has a moment of inertia of 3.0 times 10 to the minus 4 kilogram meters squared and a mass of 0.3 kilograms. The radius of the ball is 0.05 meters. At the bottom of the slope, the ball has linear velocity v and angular velocity omega. Use conservation of energy to find the linear velocity of the ball at the foot of the slope. So we're trying to calculate V. Now the first thing to notice is that as the ball is rolling down the slope, it's going to have a rotational kinetic energy because it's rotating, but it's also moving linearly down the slope. So it's also going to have a linear kinetic energy, also known as a translational kinetic energy. And another thing to point out is that when the ball is at the top of the slope, it's going to have maximum gravitational potential energy. Whereas when it's at the bottom of the slope, it's going to have maximum kinetic energy. So we could say that by conservation of energy, the gravitational potential energy that is lost from the ball rolling down the slope is equal to the kinetic energy that is gained. So we can replace these expressions with their equations. So we have mgh is equal to a half mv squared plus a half i omega squared, where a half mv squared is for your linear motion of the ball and the half i omega squared is for your rotational motion of the ball. Putting in the numbers now from the question, we have 0 0.3 times 9. 0.8 times 0.25, which was our height there, which is equal to half times 0.3 times v squared, plus a half times 3.0 times 10 to the minus 4 times omega squared. Now remember that v is what we're trying to find, so we will want to do something with this omega shortly, but we can simplify all of this for now. So if we do that, we get 0.735 is equal to 0.15 v squared, plus 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4 omega squared. Now remember the expression relating linear velocity and angular velocity, v equals r omega, so we can rearrange this for omega to get omega equals v over r, and then we can replace this expression for omega with v over r. So we end up with 0.735 equals 0.15 v squared, plus 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4 v squared over r squared. Now we've got this in terms of v squared and this in terms of v squared, but we can plug in our value for r first of all. So we have 0 0.735 equals 0 0.15 v squared plus 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4 over 0 0.05 squared times v squared. And simplifying this, the right hand side becomes 0 0.06 v squared and the rest stays the same. Now you'll see quite clearly that we've got two expressions for v squared, so we can just group them together. And if we do that, we get 0 0.21 v squared equals 0 0.735. And all I've done there is swap the sides. So dividing this side now by 0 0.21, we get v squared equals 3.5. And now square root in that 3.5 to get v on its own, we have v equals 1.9 meters per second. So that's the linear velocity of the ball at the bottom of the slope. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.